Hello, and uh, thank you for joining us for our midweek devotional and prayer time here for Austinville Christian Reformed Church. Uh, before we get started, we do have one important announcement to make, and that is uh, we had our, our council meeting last night, and we uh, adjust, we addressed uh, you know, the issue of, of trying to get uh, our doors open once again and, and gathering together as a congregation. Um, and all the various guidelines and, and, and recommendations that are in place from, uh, from uh, government agencies, uh, local and federal, uh, all the ways that, uh, that we should approach gathering together again in order to do it in a safe and, uh, and responsible manner. And uh, the, the exciting news is that uh, we think we've got a plan together that, that will work to be able to do these things and do these things in a way to, to keep you safe and also create a comfortable environment for you to return to. Uh, and so we will get that news out to you. Um, but our plan right now is hopefully to return to in-person worship uh, one week earlier than we had initially said. Uh, we hope to gather together in person on Sunday, May 31st, which is Pentecost Sunday. And it seems quite fitting that uh, the day we, we, we typically celebrate as the birth of the church uh, should be the day that we uh, sort of rebirth our our uh, in-person gatherings here in Austinville. So more information will come. Uh, check the uh, the church website uh, for the, the document that we have put together with guidelines and recommendations for coming together. We will also have that on our church Facebook page. Uh, and we will also be going old school and mailing out a hard copy in the mail. So check your mailboxes in the next few days uh, for those guidelines and recommendations. Uh, as far as, as how we hope to be able to gather together uh, in person on May 31st. So we are very excited about that. Uh, and of course, after you uh, read any of these documents, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please bring them to me or to any of the council members, and we will try to uh, address them as best as possible. Um, but with that, uh, a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Uh, we are on to uh, our midweek devotional, and uh, this has sort of been bum, well, milling about in my head for, for a couple of weeks now as I was uh, going over uh, scriptures from, from a past Sunday message, and, and I stumbled across this uh, passage from Isaiah 29, and it starts in, in verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13, begins at the very bottom of the page of our pew Bibles here in the church. I don't know what's going to look like on yours, but uh, it begins at verse 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. And jumping down to verse 16. You turn things upside down, as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, he did not make me? Can the pot say of the potter, he knows nothing? Uh, one of my favorite places to to visit back when we lived in West Seattle uh, in Washington was a, a place called Avalon Glassworks. Uh, they were a, a glass studio. Absolutely beautiful ornaments, uh, uh, pottery, uh, d decorations, uh, I mean, you name it. If it can be made out of glass, they, they made them. Uh, but what was really fun about it uh, was there was a great restaurant next door and while you're waiting for a table you could go over and if you were lucky enough they were actually blowing glass there in the studio, and you could watch them take the those lumps of sand um, and, and heat them up, and, and add the colored powders, and and begin to to blow into these glass balls and form the orbs, and then and then start to form those into into bowls or plates or or, or whatever. Um, whatever they were they were making that particular day and the process was just fascinating to take to take something so misshapen uh, like sand which which really has no shape at all it's just those those tiny granules to be able to take those in and with, with, with some heat and, and some different pressures and tools to be able to shape and form them into to whatever 
the the artist wanted to make it, it was it was an amazing thing to see and and, and we're lucky enough that uh, our former employer back in Seattle was, was really addicted to to, uh, to to glass and she often gave us uh, ornaments and things uh, for Christmas to be able to hang on our tree so we've got a few on our tree and we can remember uh, just the beautiful things uh, that, that were made in that shop um, it was fun to watch uh, Jenna uh, probably you if you're watching this you you, you know what this is similar to uh, or, or you know something similar to that in, in the way that you with that you form clay um, that you take a lump of, of wet dirt uh, and and you and you begin to mold it and 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 turn it into whatever is in your mind whatever it is in your heart to create um, and that too is an, an amazing thing. The 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 communion set uh, that you made this year. Uh, it, those of you who remember from our communion service that we had online for Easter, um, the plate and the pitcher and the goblet. Those were all made by Jana in her studio, uh, formed from formless lumps of of clay into something beautiful and functional. Uh, we were able to to celebrate communion using using those physical uh, elements. It's amazing to me that, that, that something can be turned into just about anything, uh, whatever is in the artist's mind. Uh, and then that, that image of, 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 of the potter and the clay there at, at the end of Isaiah, it, it struck me a couple weeks ago as I was thinking about uh, more the, the passage, the beginning of that passage there of, of, of God again, desiring more from us desiring our hearts not just not just these acts of worship um, and putting those two together that, that how God formed us uh, that God as as the potter uh, forming us uh, all the way back in Genesis Adam out of the dirt uh, that imagery throughout the Bible uh, we are, are the clay in the potter's hands um, God forming us to be everything and anything that he wants us to to be, we, we, we cannot be anything other than what God has created us to be. And, and, and the image there at the end of that passage from Isaiah that, that, that we read, it's kind of funny that, that, that the created thing would, would dare to speak out against its creator to say, no, that's not who I am. That's not what you, what you made me to be. We as the created vessel do not get to define ourselves. It is God, the creator, the, the, the potter. Uh, in whose hands we were formed, um, he made us to be who we are, uh, to have a function and a purpose. Um, we are who God has created us to be. A lot of us are still being formed and made into the thing that God made us to be, to fulfill the purpose and the plan that God had for us when he created us. But then I got to thinking about the glassworks, uh, Jana's process of, of, of making uh, bowls and, and plates and pitchers and sculptures out of, out of clay, what it must be like to be those raw elements. Um, glass blowing is, it, it, in, it involves a lot of heat. Fire, turning that sand, melting it into, into something pliable. It is, it is literally glowing as it's pulled out of the furnace and, and begins to be shaped into the thing that the artist wants to shape it into. Imagine being a lump of clay in, in, in the potter's hands, being kneaded and pounded and scraped and clawed at to, to be plopped onto the, to the table and spun in a circle, uh, being formed into something is not a, a comfortable experience. To be that ball of clay, to be that ball of molten sand would be an uncomfortable experience if they could feel the things that they were going through. To be formed and molded is hard. It is at times painful. As the sculptor scrapes away the bits of clay that aren't necessary to get to, to the piece of art that, that lies inside of that lump. Imagine being the clay and that is indeed who we are. We are the clay. We are that lump of molten sand, pliable, being moved and shaped 
into whatever it is that the Creator has designed us to become. And that is an unpleasant process. We are going through that now with, with this time of isolation and quarantine. We are being shaped and molded. And for many of us, if not all of us, it is an unpleasant and uncomfortable time. But once again, as, as those bits and pieces that aren't necessary are scraped away, are, are molded and pounded and formed into what they need to be, as we come out of the other end, as we emerge from the furnace that final time, formed into the perfect thing that God designed and, and desired for us to be, it is a beautiful image. And so while we may be in the midst of something that is uncomfortable and unpleasant, with hope we trust in the potter, in his ability, in the skill of his hands, to bring us out of this better and more beautiful than when we went in. And that is my prayer for all of us during this time of social distancing, as we, as we near towards at least a, a, a checkpoint towards the end, uh, that we're gathering back together, that what we form into as we form into a church once again in person will be something more amazing and more beautiful than before all of this began. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are, that we are indeed still works in progress. That not a single one of us is a completed work. You are working on us, forming us, molding us, making us into who and what you have always wanted us to be. And we acknowledge that it is not often a pleasant experience. What the tree must feel as, as it is pruned, as bits and pieces are scraped away from these lumps of clay, as we are thrown back and forth into the fire, blown and shaped by the artist. We are stretched, we are... We are stressed, but in your hands we will come out better, more beautiful, perhaps even stronger than when we went into this process. All we can do as your works is trust in you, in your skill and your plan for us, the hope that we will emerge better than ever. That we can trust in you as our God, for that is who you are, loving and trustworthy, and the most amazing skilled artist that there ever has been. As we go through this time, help us to endure the trials, the struggles. Help us to endure ever mindful of the hope we have in you. Lord, at this time, we also remember Arnold Scott and the ongoing trials uh, that he has had this year with his leg and his feet uh, healing from his injury back all the way back in January, in and out of the furnace, formed and shaped over and over and over again these several past months. It is taking its toll, Lord. He is feeling the stress of it all, and you can tell that his, his spirits are down. With the, the latest news that uh, the treatments don't seem to be working the way the doctors want them to be working, the, the decisions that must be made to move forward with, with uh, another surgery or, or what other options there might be. It has been hard on Arnold. It has been hard on his family. It is hard on us as his church family to walk with him through this time. Lord, we pray that your will is done. 
that your good and perfect purposes are, are, are played out uh, at this time. Your wisdom and your guidance, uh, Holy Spirit, we need you in this time. For Arnold and for his family, as, as a decision must be made by next week, Lord, we ask that you would uh, give them peace, whatever it is that they decide. But we know, we know that you are with them, that you have been with them this whole time and you will continue to be with them until this comes to, uh, to its end, whatever that might be. And so, Lord, we pray, we pray for a miracle, if that is your will, that uh, healing would take place and that there could be a full recovery. But God, whatever it is that comes of this, we pray for Arnold and his family, acceptance of, of all that will take place, and that they will trust in you, that you are working in all of this, working through all of this for, for some purpose. We put all of this into your hands, trusting in you and your ability to do the most amazing things that even we cannot imagine. This time of, of isolation has been tough on all of us, uh, not being able to gather as your people, as your, as your physical body together uh, has been difficult. And Lord, so we, th we thank you. We thank you that, uh, that through your guidance, we hope that uh, we as a council here in your church have, have set a plan in motion, um, have made the decisions that will, that will best honor you and best love and care for those that you have, have put into uh, put into our hands to care for. And that is the people of, of Austinville Christian Reformed Church. We thank you for uh, your guidance. We, we pray that what we have decided upon uh, last night um, will, will be the way to move forward. And we are excited. We are excited to gather together again in person, to see one another and to reconnect Help us, though, to do it safely and responsibly and in the most loving way that all of the members of this body, of your body, would be cared for through the, through the guidelines and the recommendations that we have set forth. Lord, we pray for your continued guidance, that, uh, that if anything needs to change, if anything uh, must change, that we would know what to do, when to do it. But we are, we are happy. We're happy to know that there might be an, an, an end of sorts in sight. But we also know that, uh, that this virus is far from behind us. That there are still many uh, around this state, around our nation, around the world who are suffering because, because of the impacts of, of this virus and, and, and of the policies and things that have been put in place in order to, to try to keep people safe. It is a difficult time. May your spirit of peace reign in all hearts. That we would, that we would recognize that, that there is a plan in place that is, that is really for our benefit. And that moving together, working together towards an end, will we'll, we'll see us all through safely. We continue to pray for all of our leaders. The daily, the daily process of making decisions on, on how to best reopen economies, reopen states, uh, try to get people's lives back to something that, that looks like normal. Uh, the stress and the anxiety that, that must be upon all of them, Lord. Uh, help them to, to weather this storm. To bear up under the pressure during these times. We continue to pray for all of the essential workers who are, are daily out in, in the midst of this. Uh, encountering um, 
really encountering folks from all ends of the spectrum, those who are happy to be out and, and, and about their business as, uh, as usual, and those who are, are angry, um, those who are expressing their frustrations in ways that are not often helpful, um, that they, they encounter that full spectrum. And then they do it each and every day in our stores, in our restaurants, in our hospitals, the doctor's offices, uh, for all uh, of those who are there on the front lines. Protect them. Uh, give them peace. Give them the courage to do what needs to be done as they, as they really hold all of our lives together. And the simple act of just showing up to work. For all of those who are struggling emotionally, physically, financially during this time, Lord, we ask for your spirit to come upon them as well, to give them peace. Uh, enable those of us who are, are, are able to help, uh, help us to reach out. Uh, whether it just be a phone call, a card, or a letter. Um, whether financial help is needed, or, or work in a garden, or in the yard. So many little things, Lord, can often make a big difference. Those who need help, give them a, a spirit of courage and confidence to be able to reach out to us, that we might be able to help them to do whatever it is that we can to, to help them through this time. For the reminder, God, is that you have created us, molded us to be, to be one people, a community of believers a community of, of, of human beings here on this earth, and that it is only together, it truly is only together, working together, loving one another. It is only through, through a spirit of unity and harmony that we will all get through this. Unite us now more than ever. Remind us all of the importance to love you and love our neighbors. Align our hearts with yours, that your will is done in our lives, in all we say, all we do. It is to you we turn, and to you we fully lean on, our firm foundation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, and so once again, uh, we are hoping to gather for in-person worship. It's going to look a little different. Let's uh, we'll just get that out there now. It's not going to be it's not going to be normal, but it it, it will be the new normal. Uh, and uh, and regardless, it is going to be good, truly good to gather together as God's people. So uh, be on the lookout on the church website, uh, church Facebook page, and your mailboxes. Uh, we are going to send it out as many ways as possible that the news is out there and the guidelines are in place so that when we try to gather together on the 31st, um, uh, it, it, will be, it will just be a wonderful time, uh, indeed a time of celebration. So we thank you for, for joining us today and for the devotional and this time of prayer. And we look forward to seeing your smiling faces uh, actually in person in a little over a week. Thank you and God bless.